Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. I want to give you some tips on how you can highlight anything in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, first of all, shout out to Terrence Ferguson and Mr. Rudra, who uh, both asked at different times, Mr. Rudra, quite a while ago, they asked for different times about how to highlight certain things. One was music and one was words. So I've got lots of examples. They're very simple to do. They're just very tedious to do a lot of things, but uh, they all have great results. So let me just show you the basic idea, which is keyframes in something in an overlay shape above things. So very simple. So let's say I wanted to, to highlight the, the word here. I'm gonna to go to my tools and grab my rectangle tool and I will draw a shape like this. I'll go to the essential graphics, change the color to something maybe yellow, go to the effects controls and then find a blend mode that works. Right now this hides the letters, but if you choose some of these blend modes like multiply, you can start to see the word. And if you use your scroll wheel, you can just scroll through here and find the one that works the best. And some of these are not going to, to work too well Overlay seems to do a, a good job. Uh, you can still see the, the word and you can move this around. So you move this over in the right hand side of the effects controls. We change something like, we can change the path or the position. So if I change the position, so the position is there and I've got a setting turned on in the edit menu on Windows, Premiere Pro menu on Mac, preferences, audio, play audio while scrubbing. I have that turned on. And the reason is you can hear the beginning of the words. Now I've got another example underneath that's showing. I'll hide that for a second. So you can hear nine of the next word. N -n 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 so I know at that point right here, I can move this. And I like to drag here. I like to drag on these numbers rather than try to select it. So now it's changing. And you do that a lot. There's no automatic way. I didn't say that this was an automatic way to highlight anything. All of these are manual. Now, when I tried this example with a shape, I got about halfway through, and you'll notice that when it gets to this point, 1962 is too wide. So if I change the scale, turn off uniform, and then change the horizontal scale to something smaller and add a keyframe, and then go back and make this larger, you'll, whoops horizontal keyframe larger, you'll see what happens right away. The problem is the anchor point. So there's an anchor point in here. So I, I this is the first test that I did with just a, a yellow overlay. And I was changing the position and the scale. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And what was happening because scaling occurs on the anchor point, because the anchor point was different, sometimes the word would scale backwards, sometimes forwards. It looked awful. So I threw that away. I just wanted to give you the basic tools to understand everything we're going to be doing is based on some level of keyframes, something over top of another thing with some kind of blending so you can see what's going on. So let me delete that and show you what I did. You'll see this example is much better. Since 1962, the Native Canadian Centre of Toronto has been a key meeting place for all people of all nations from across Canada and all over the world. As Toronto's oldest Indigenous community organization... So 
If I click on the top, that's the layer that I have this little underline. And if we go to the effects controls and I twirl down motion, you'll see position and scale width. So I'm only scaling the width. Why is this working? This is working because this is not a, a geometric shape from Essential Graphics. This is actually an image, a Photoshop file. Um, and I think it just works much easier. Also, when you draw these keyframes and you can select all of them or one of them and change it to hold. If you don't change it to hold, well, let me show you what happens. I'll change these to linear and watch what happens to it. Since 1962, the Native Canadian Centre of Toronto has been a key meeting place for Mm -hmm. It's like a Roomba going around the room trying to vacuum. If you have it on a hold keyframe, it's jumping to each one, kind of like the bouncing ball uh, we're used to seeing in, in uh, a sing-along. So select all of them, hold keyframes. For all people of all nations from across Canada and all over the world. Now, I... I when I got the example from uh, Mr. Rudra, he actually showed me uh, something uh, which I believe was Hindi, and it was following the, the underline, and it looked kind of cool. And what it was, was a, no, not that, that one. It was a gradient. And this is just a Photoshop file. So if I open this up in Photoshop, And when you make this, if you want to, it could just be a, a rectangle, an image, or a ping. Uh, anytime I create something in Photoshop, if I can keep it a Photoshop file, that means I can make a change at any time. So this has a gradient that fades out. And that's what the example he showed me. And it was a soft edge. And I thought that looked kind of cool. So I wanted to recreate that. My height was a little bit too big. So I did squish it down. But you'll see the idea. So you'll see on the edges, it's transparent. And this is just a gradient layer. So you go down into the bottom. Yeah, so if you come down and create a gradient, that's what you end up with here. And I'll edit the gradient. So at this point, it's 100%. And its position is, its location is 10. And this one's location is 90. So 10% of both edges fade away. I knew I'm being way too detailed here, but if you like that soft edge look, which I do, you make it a gradient, save it as a Photoshop file, make sure it has no other layers, and you could come in here and change the gradient at any time. Okay, so that's that example here, which I think works really well. As Toronto's oldest Indigenous community organization, and one of and you'll notice that when it jumps from the end of one line all the way over to the end, because it's a hold, you don't see it floating down there. Boop, 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 boop. It jumps through there. Okay. Let me show you another example. And that is all right. Uh, somebody trying to break into the cars um, in on my in my driveway. So uh, I have security cameras in my house, and this one points out front. So watch this guy. You'll see him come along. He tries my wife's car first. He or she, and then tries the next car. They're both locked. So he heads off into the backyard. Don't know what he did there. So that's one way of doing it. What I've got happening here is two things, actually. Uh, this top one is just the, sh the uh, stroke around. The bottom actually has an effect called magnify. So if you go to the effects, and look for magnify, it's in the distort cat category. 
And what it does is it creates either a circle or a square and you tell it how much to magnify. And then we get a crash. So I'm changing the center of the magnify so that as it follows around, I was just moving this center over here. Unfortunately, there's no way to copy the center XY position to the circle, the, uh, the stroke circle XY position. Even though they're both position keyframes, they're not compatible. So I had to move ahead, follow, move ahead, and I moved it. I think this is interesting. I would use this as an example if I was creating like a suspenseful television show. And it's almost like a, a, um, a scope looking at it, but it's not really good for accuracy. So let's look at a different version here. If you wanna have a better look of what's going on in the scene, this is just the, without the magnify. This is just with the circle with a stroke on it. This is easier to see the context of where the person is in the scene. But the trade-off is you don't get a zoom in. So how about we combine both of them? So what I did was I took this, select both of them, right-click, and nest it. That means I'm, I'm taking two tracks and I'm turn and I'm creating a new sequence and I'm embedding both of those. You bring the sequence into Premiere Pro here. So that's a, a, a nest. If I double click on that, you'll see it's the same thing. So for the nest, what I'm doing is I'm changing the position and the scale is going to stay at 165%. So if you look at this example, it's the best of both worlds you get a highlight that follows him around, him or her. My wife is convinced this is a woman. And you, you still get zoomed in at 165%. And all that highlight is in the essential graphics is just a circle with a, a stroke color and no fill. Pretty simple. An easy way to highlight something. You could use this for maps. And I'll put a link at the end uh, and I'll put it in the description. I actually have an animated map with a dotted line example. Okay, so you could use that for a, a ton of different uses. Basically a shape. There's no blend mode this time. It, it's just the, the outside circle. But let's look at my uh, favorite example here. I've got two music examples, and this is what uh, Terrence really wanted. I've got this example first, and here you'll see the music follow with a highlight. And if we click on the graphic, and open up the effects controls. This is just a shape. And it's set to hard light. And you'll see the hard light shows the notes very, very clearly. And all I did here, again, while I was scrolling along, and I would tap the space bar when I hear one at the next bar. And then I would move that over by moving this position here, and then it would create a new keyframe. I would hit play, hit stop, where, it, and then I would just move a, a bar at a time. Now, you can't copy and paste this because um, when manuscript is written, and, and I'll have to apologize to all the musicians who look at what how the computer transcribed this and added a million ties in here and rests and stuff. Yes, computers do a horrible job of, of writing manuscript uh, by default without a lot of tweaking and, and quantizing. Trust me, I quantized the crap out of this to try to fix it, but I couldn't. Uh, but I had to listen to every bar because some of these phrases are longer, especially near the end. 
The, the bottom is just two bars, so it's going to go faster. Okay, I also did another example, which I think is so much more pleasing. In this example, I have a, a yellow highlight, and the, the highlight stays directly in the center, and the music passes along. So for this music, I had to take what was on the other page, the four lines, and I actually went into Photoshop and I strung them all together to make a giant whoop, so that thing slowly moves from one side to another. And I, I think this example is much more pleasing. I've also recorded myself playing on, on the, uh, the keys. And what you could do is to select the top, go to the essential graphics, and change the color. Now here's something that you should note. See how dull the yellow is? And see how bright the yellow is? That's because this blend mode, hard light, brightens everything up. So if, if I go back and make this a bright yellow, watch what happens. It completely blows everything out. So I have to keep this away. But what I can do, instead of changing um, the color over here, if I just change the hue, so leave this on the hue and either drag this around or drag this around, and I can pick a different color, a different hue, but, but the saturation and the brightness stay. So let's say I wanted this blue, click OK, and now it's blue. So highlighting anything is really a matter of putting something over top of something else and changing a blend mode or just having a stroke with no blend mode. I want to just show you that, that nest one more time because that one is really important. If I open this up, remember the highlight is moving, okay? And in here, the nest is, is changing its position. This is, if you think about this for a second, if you didn't know to do it this way, what you might think you'd, you would do is you zoom in, then put the circle, move the zoomed area, move the circle, move that move, and then you have this conflict going on. It's always better to, to make the circle move, the highlight thing move in the full size, nest it, and then zoom in or pan around or do whatever you want. Lots of different ways. I think I got given you some great examples that uh, you can play with. Um, I had fun doing this, even though it was really tedious for uh, the words in that, that test example to put them in there. But uh, if you've got scrubbing on and you can listen to it, the beginning of the word, you can do that. Thanks to Jonathan Van Bilsen. I put a link to his great show. Uh, he gave me the voiceover to the text example. Hey, if you're new to, new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more, you can do that on videorevealed.com uh, slash shop. Donate once monthly. We love all of our wonderful donors. Uh, you can reach out to me uh, on videorevealed.com because I don't be reading them comments. And that's how I get to know how to do some of these things. People reach out and ask me these questions. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to listen to one or two or more people asking for the same thing. And then I create these tutorials that hopefully you find useful.